the description, when the course was first offered in 2013, 2014, um, and, uh, and again, this was after in the, a bad experience. Uh, you know, I was told it was a bad experience of uh, first year class um, in uh, the mid 90s that was offered at Baylor. They said, well, we have this heritage speaker population. We need to do something about this. Uh, let's offer a first year class in um, Spanish for heritage speakers. Um, and uh, the class did not do particularly well. I'm told enrollments were always low. Nobody wanted to sign up. And so they just let it go. Um, and 20 years later, you know, we we're picking up it again. And we decided, all right, well, you know, second, sem second year, you know, 2000 level, okay, sophomore level of college uh, span. That's a good place for it, right? Um, we'll bring the, 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 the English dominant heritage speakers with lower skills, bring them up, you know, and, but we'll may be able to get some of those, you know, students, you know, maybe uh, who might be almost ready or might be ready for um, junior, uh, senior level college classes. So they decided, hey, let's put it at the 2000 level. As a perk, 2304 will count as fourth semester Spanish, um, which was important because our language requirement for College of Arts and Sciences was four semesters of language. So heritage speakers uh, could uh, potentially um, finish their language requirement with one course if they didn't already have it finished when they came in. Um, so that was a big perk, right? Um, but <clears throat> the person who wrote the, and I'm not sure who did this actually, but the person who wrote the description called it the Special Spanish Language Course. <laughs> I know, cringeworthy. But for, <laughs> for students who already speak, read, and understand Spanish on a fluent or almost fluent level. <laughs> yeah. So, I, so you see the, the potential that we have, but then the description itself, and we didn't realize this until um, somebody looked, because I, look I look at this thing called ShareSys, and it's this big program and I just have the numbers and I plug in numbers and I plug in instructors and I'm scheduling classes and all this kind of stuff. And it's this big long thing with uh, uh, how many sections? It's, I, I don't know, it's ridiculous. It's, it, it's like uh, 200 sections of Spanish a year. Um, and so I just see Spanish 2304, Spanish for heritage speakers. And Karen calls me up one afternoon and she says, oh my gosh, I can't believe, she says, Alex, look at the description that the students are seeing when they go to the course schedule. And I clicked on it and I went, oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder nobody's signing up for this class. Okay, so there's all kinds of, pro there's all kinds of problems with that. But, but this was also um, a lack of knowledge in the, I think the, the faculty at the time, you know, what is a heritage speaker and not really being aware of the literature of, on heritage speakers, et cetera. So, Anyway, that's what they, well-meaning, that's what they, they put in place. Now, um, catalog description that we have developed since then obviously goes into a little bit more detail about, you know, uh, we, we needed to describe, because advisors would ask us, what's a heritage speaker, right? That was another, okay, we realize we have this communication gap. It was obvious to us what heritage speaker is, but advisors don't know what heritage speakers are. It, certainly, they couldn't possibly know what heritage speakers are if our own faculty didn't know what heritage speakers were, you know, um, you know, back in the early 2000s. So anyway. So um, continuing with that description, um, basically I come in and, um, okay, let's get this class and I have a course description. Um, and when I look at this course description, I think, whoa, it seems like I am giving them everything in here. And then I go into the class and I have all these expectations of, you know, I have a course prepared and I'm going to, I'm so excited about the material and so and so. I even had the, a book picked the first year and I go and I crush my head against the wall when I had all these different students with different levels. I had from very basic to very advanced and I had 
all different backgrounds and so what am I going to do? So what I've learned from that first semester and that very ex ex that experience, that challenge, I was like, okay, what I gotta, I don't know what to do. It, uh, well, I hope I can try to use what I adjusted this first semester to the next. Same thing, next semester. So I dropped the book and I started developing materials as the course went. And I started identifying the different needs, basically t working on one-on-one -on -one with the students and trying to figure out what was more important to them as a group that's itself very difficult. So that has not changed. I am still in that phase where I come to the first day of class with a program, but I tell them this is what I vision. If is possible but don't stick to it if you have to be very flexible and I tell them and I explain to them and they're very understanding about it so I try as I, the, the course goes I change a lot because I have every semester a different experience.